Boise, Idaho. When most people think of it, they think of three things. Potatoes, and you know what, that's pretty much it. But Boise has a secret. The largest flock of California condors in human care anywhere in the world. I wanted to find out more. And so, it, before the coffee is working the clock, I've met with the team that cares for these birds day in and day out to see what it takes to save an endangered species. Step one, apparently, breakfast. Today we're gonna eat some rats, or short chicks. Condors don't need to eat every day, so we fast the adults three times a week. But the chicks eat every day. We feed them all kinds of um, culprit, so bunnies, um, rats, guinea pigs. Um, we also have like uh, beef chub, mixed meat, um, horse meat, and the calves. That was mixed meat. That sounds like what Taco Bell serves. Yeah. Taco um, Bell doesn't donate money to us, do they? They don't. <laughs> okay. They love bunnies. Bunnies is like their ultimate favorite thing. I mean, I love bunnies too, but in a different way, I think. So we feed everybody in the trap. It's like a, an area at the end of their enclosure um, that we can close down. And so we feed them there every day. They go in there to eat. And uh, when we have to trap them, they're just used to going in there. So we just shut them. Easy enough. Right, that's what we call the trap. <laughs> uh, they don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Before the day continues any further, I've noticed a ritual I need to ask about. So, why do you step in a giant bowl of milk every time you go in a... Do, do you have a cat that you don't like very much? Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> that. <laughs> um, no, it's just very strong chemicals. It's because of biosecurity. Uh, we just want to make sure we're not introducing anything into our barns. And if there's anything in one barn, so it's not, it doesn't get into the other one. My curiosity satiated, I leave Carolina to do the dishes. Wheelbarrow? Hope you don't get me missing a spot. And head across the complex to see a very different kind of condor work. Outreach. Obviously, raising these condors contributes directly to their conservation, but this is a whole nother way we can reach people as well. So this is Did just... Did you read this room? What an embryo looks like. Well, I always like to share my personal experiences in working with these condors because that's not something that you can get online or in a book to actually talk to someone who works with these animals every day and has all these unique experiences. So we'll let them incubate for the first 14 days because we've figured out that produces the most successful hatching egg. And then we'll switch it out with a dummy egg. We'll incubate the real egg in the lab so we can keep track of the progress. And then once that egg starts hatching, we'll switch it back out for the dummy egg. And they're really good at hatching that egg. Oh, wow. People are going to remember that. And um, then they're going to go out and they're going to tell their friends about condors. And when you get talking about condors, you can talk about how to save those condors. Yeah, we should get some Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Yeah. I really appreciate it. It's fun. Back in condor country, I'm about to discover that not all of the propagation team Hello, everyone. have only two legs. <laughs> so I, I, I can't help but notice that these are not condors. Yeah, so the goats are here to basically keep everything within this quadrant trimmed down nice and short so that we don't have to bring mowers in here and mow around the condors. Um, when you're breeding birds for release into the wild, you really don't want them to be used to human interaction. Um, you don't want them to see us feeding or uh, messing with their waters. That's it. There's nothing else in there. Not with that attitude. We don't want them used to human voices, so we're very quiet back there. Um, we don't want them used to just regular human noises like cars. Um, it keeps the birds nice and wild, so when they do go out for release, um, they're not attracted to human activity and, and campgrounds and things like that, so this keeps them nice and wild. It's an inventive solution, <laughs> yeah. for sure. I'm... Yeah, it definitely works well for us. And for the goats. <laughs> By this point, I thought I'd met all of the hairy team members, but there was one more to go. So this is Bunny. She gets rid of all the mice in the office. She's missed a couple. I'll show myself out. Ah! 
She actually was uh, found in a condor pen when she was a kitten. Oh. Um, she's been here ever since. Unfortunately, I was unable to confirm rumors that they also have a rabbit named Cat. It's now the afternoon and the team readies to move two condors to a new barn. But like any move, there are some last minute hiccups. There was a ton of sediment in the hose and it made it clog. Because we just have it coming out of a tiny little hole of the stream to overfill the water so that we don't have to go out there all the time. Is this an existing system that you purchased or did you invent uh, this on your own? invented it. <laughs> yeah, we just buy different parts from Rose and put it all together to get it to do what we want. <laughs> High stakes Legos. Yeah. Always something to fix. Something to figure out. <laughs> While Leah and Carolina are working hard, there's another team member sitting around watching TV. But it's not what you think. Breeding season, we spend hours and hours watching these birds. Um, in the summer, we'll spend more time on projects around the facility, but we will always do wellness checks three times a day. At this time of year, it's mostly chick developmental stages. So like for instance, over here, I've got a chick that's jumping all around on the ledge and flapping its wings. Um, and that is a chick that is getting very close to fledging. It's actually when you're like really busy and working on projects for a long time, it's nice to have a day where you can actually just watch your birds um, because you'll definitely feel like, oh man, I don't really know what's, what's going on. I need to spend some time watching everybody. Um, these birds, you know, they all have very uh, individual little idiosyncrasies. Um, so we do our jobs better when we understand the birds as individuals. Okay, I get it, it's important, but it's still boring to watch. I'm going back to the fun people. So we're gonna vaccinate one of our nestlings today. This is 1109. We are vaccinating for the West Nile virus. It's a virus that spreads through um, mosquito bites. It's somewhat common and we had a really bad outbreak in 2006. And so ever since then, we're just making sure we always um, vaccinate all of our condors. We try to do everything without the adults knowing what we're doing. So one of the staff members is going to go up onto the uh, ledge, distract the parents, and while he's up there, me and Carolina can sneak in, place the blanket over the chick, and Carolina will hold the chick still very gently while I just poke the leg real quick, and then we'll just sneak right back out. Um, so the whole process, doing the vaccine, just takes a few, few seconds, like less than 30 seconds, I'd say. So that went well. Yeah, yeah, that went really well. Um, chick stayed nice and calm. The adults were pretty calm. So we'll run into the observation room right now. And we'll just pull him up on the camera and that way we can keep a close eye on the chick. Looks like he's doing pretty good. We'll just keep a really close eye on him and, and see how the parents react when they come back and document everything and make sure everyone's good. So much for getting away from the screens. It's now the late afternoon, but there's still one big item left on today's to-do list. Uh, we're headed to our new barn, uh, Condor Barn 4. It was started a f two years ago now. Um, and we finally actually finished the final touches uh, just this past summer. We're bringing two birds. Number 1020 and 1032. They're going to be the first birds put into this barn. With the cost of housing in Boise, they probably have the cheapest place in the city. <laughs> the team settles in to keep tabs on these birds as they settle into their new home. And it's time for me to call it a night. It's been an amazing day for me, but for this team, it's just another Tuesday. The hard work and dedication I've seen on display here today is nothing short of remarkable and it's plain to see that these birds are in very good hands. And paws. And hooves. Yeah.